Well, welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. No better place to be as we close out this year than right where you are. For we take time before the ball drops to come to our Lord together, to be encouraged by his words and his promises to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are our God, our strength, our rock, our redeemer. So deliver us from all that would keep us from you. Forgive us our sins. For it is in you alone that we have forgiveness. It is in you alone that we have life. And Lord, as the year ends, we give you thanks for the countless blessings that you have given to us in this past year. And we give you thanks too for the troubles that we have undergone. May your name always be praised, whether mountain or valley. It is in the restorative hope that you give us, Lord Jesus, that we eagerly look forward to the year to come. You have said that nothing separates us from your love. So may it always be so. Amen. Friends, it's no denying that this New Year's Eve is going to look a little bit different this year. Crazy how it feels like this year has been so long, yet so quick. How everything seems to be the same day after day, and yet everything has changed. And I forget what the name of that theory is or, or what it's called. I read the BuzzFeed article, pretended to understand it. All I know is that this year is about to be over. Now, Barry Manilow saying how it's just another New Year's Eve. It's just a night like all the rest. It's just another New Year's Eve. Let's make it the best. And even though growing up every single year I saw my aunts get together, they would embrace in a big circle. They would sway back and forth and sing along with this song. This year, it'll be different. And you know, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is about a person who was so sure of what he was about and what the day would bring, so sure about his purpose and what he needed to do and exactly how it's all going to go. And then one day he is traveling and has what I would like to call a personal COVID-like experience. His world stops and suddenly everything changes. Here's the text. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand into Damascus, and for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias, and the Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Uh, Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul was this fighter. He was this man. He was angry and full of all his personal ideals of what should be. And he was determined to crush out anything that would be different than what he thought was best. Now we can tell from the authority given to him by the, uh, the high priest and the fear of Ananias that Saul was a man of certainty and action. And this was what his life was to be all about. His encounter on the road to Damascus, though, threw him to the ground, blinded him, and changed everything. His priorities were inverted, and after this, he would no longer live for his own ideas, but he would live for the person, Jesus, his Lord. And it didn't just happen because he felt like the ball on New Year's, right? It took time. Saul got help. He was baptized. Saul spent time learning praying, and then eventually he would become, by the grace of God, the man named Paul. 
And crises bring us all to the same place, to a, to a place of stopping and examining. And it is my prayer that in this stoppage, in this deep breath before another year begins, that we take this op opportunity to turn to the Lord, to go deeper in trust with him. As we examine ourselves, let us come together in worship, in personal devotion, and in digging in God's word together with other people. Let us be filled with, with more love for those around us. Now, while we have all struggled during these times, the, the poor and the hurting, they need us more than ever. But the pouring out of love by God's people is what we will be known for coming out of this pandemic. How together the people of God did not turn inward with their time, their treasure, their talents, but instead they opened their hands and their homes. And we will have courage and be bold. Not because of a vaccine, though we give thanks to God that the vaccine has come. But we will have courage and be bold because through all of this, God has been with us. God has been there. Friends, look back on this year tonight. Some of us have experienced truly awful things. And when we push back and we push through that pain, we see him standing with us in the fire. For our Lord does not leave us in the terrible, but rather stands next to us, with us, and embraces us. And in the days to come, as we keep turning the page, we will see the new things God is doing. How his love turns the page. How he calls each one of us uniquely. How he equips us to fight the good fight of the faith. And how we find strength and healing in his work. You know, Barry Manilow's song ends with, it's just another New Year's Eve, just another all Lang Syne. But when we're through this year, you'll see, we'll be just fine. No way, Barry. As for me and my household, we will be more than just fine. We will be stronger. We will be more purposeful. We will continue to do what we have always done. We are the children of God who together do the work that he has called us to. And friends, it's going to be that way for you too as well. Because it's not about hitting these resolutions. It's not about getting through COVID or living the dream. It's about who you belong to and how he himself will walk with you and calls you right where you are to a life of love and service, a life that is abundant and hopeful. So God bless you. And may 2021 be filled with his love and peace. And I would invite you to come and join us here at St. John's as we start our new sermon series, Turning the Page and Embracing the Life God Has Given Us. God bless you, and I'll see you real soon.